If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Even in fantastic Pixar cartoons, nobody can aim for sh It's almost like this is a high-speed chase with the shooter shooting from a swerving car at another swerving car. It's amazing how much you talk about guns and know absolutely nothing about them. Dude, it's difficult hitting a target that's relatively still, let alone one that's moving erratically. Also, yet another case of CinemaSins not giving a movie props for no or short studio logos. You would think the fact that they complain about this so often, when a movie doesn't do it, they would give credit where it's due. This is all well and good, but someone driving alongside on the street could easily figure out your identity if they noticed you before you did this, or even remember your car. Your identity is toast, Mr. Incredible. Key word there, could. It didn't happen, so why are you sinning this? Besides, you're talking about a man that looks like this while literally only wearing a small mask over his eyes. If people haven't been able to figure out his identity, it's clear they don't care. Let's go now. Why doesn't he just lay the tree down on the ground? Jesus. The guy stops a train later with his bare hands, so he doesn't need the treat. He could, but that doesn't solve the issue of the cat being stuck on one of the branches, which is still probably too tall for the old lady to reach. And as it turns out, Unpredictable Chase ended up going down the perfect street for Mr. Incredible to stop it. The part CinemaSins doesn't show you is that Mr. Incredible has been tracking this chase with his car's computer and chose this spot because the car chase was coming to this location. I am your number one fan! This move doesn't work out any better for Incredible Boy than it did for me at Taylor Swift's New England estate, which is why... Skip. How the hell did Mr. Incredible know this dude was on top of this roof? All he heard was that there was a tour bus robbery in progress. He obviously didn't get there while it was happening, but he got there in time to see the robber running away, I guess? But didn't catch up to him until he ran all the way to the top of a building. This is the part where you put the adult pants on and recognize inference. There is a reason they showed you Mr. Incredible's car computer, to show how he tracks down criminal activity. The car also has a police scanner, so he most likely overheard where the criminal got off to. It's gotta be really frustrating to require explanations for literally anything you see on screen. Where did he get the blue outfit? from ding yeah but why is it blue specifically ding also why is there a giant eye on his chest ding i get that it stands for mr incredible but why is his name incredible specifically ding this movie does not thoroughly explain everything i have a hard time understanding therefore mr incredible accidentally saves someone into the scene of another crime he can stop you're watching a pixar movie about people with superpowers and this is what you're hung up on <sighs> it's an exaggeration of a superhero trope. All the movie is trying to show is that Mr. Incredible's hands are usually full with crime and people he can save. This town is like a less terrible version of Gotham City. So I guess this minister knows their secret identity? Nearly all the wedding guests are dressed in their superhero outfits, which is odd considering you'd think proper wedding attire would be called for, even here. They took a risk, this guy wouldn't say anything, which is kind of amazing. That's because the priest is John Constantine. All right, I realize there's been more than a few crybaby bitches in my comment section angry that I don't address every little dumbass complaint that CinemaSins has. So, it's clear this is an engagement for those in the know. That's why these pews are so empty. The priest knows who they all are already. Happy? You and your son can go now, Mrs. Parr. Did the principal ask her to come out here without looking at the tape first? Yes, because the reason Helen was called down here was that the teacher claimed Dash had been disruptive in his class, not specifically because of the tape, especially because... Dash, this is the third time this year you've been sent to the office. I can tell you from experience as a former class clown, your parents will be called based on the teacher's testimony alone. Isn't it just a little possible someone would see that? Especially since the most popular kid in school just happens to be around in that same area? Yes, it's possible. But again, no one did. So why the f*** is this a sin again? Now I gotta pay to fix a table! The, car. the table? You broke a plate, dude. Not a table. Man, you are distracted. Jesus. You are literally showing a scene of the knife sticking out of the table, Jeremy. Come on. Why is it that none of the kids in this family have the same powers as their parents? You'd think genetically, with three kids, there'd be at least one. 
and you'd think even if they had different powers, each would have either elasticity or super strength or some combination. Because the movie is showing that the superhero gene is random. The only thing the parents pass on is the ability to manifest a superpower. Also, this family is a parody of the Fantastic Four, a group known as Marvel's first family. Get it? Also, we'll bring up the Fantastic Four elephant in the room, since half the characters have the same powers, and you could even make a case Mr. Incredible is a non monstery the thing. That lays Dash, who's just the Flash as a kid, so we'll send that. But for all the people who are down on this because it's an animated Fantastic Four, when's the last time you saw a Fantastic Four movie that was even good, much less as good as this? I swear, I wrote the previous sin before hearing this one. Anyway, Dash has super speed because the Human Torch has super speed. All they did was split Johnny into Jack-Jack and Dash. I mean, Mr. Incredible isn't orange, right? Anyway, the reason the Fantastic Four movies aren't any good is because they weren't handled by their rightful owners over at Marvel. I guarantee the MCU Fantastic Four is going to be on the same level as Guardians of the Galaxy. Book it. Oh! Awesome, but that's still spit. No, Jeremy, that's actually water. I wanted to go bowling! <laughs> Both these superheroes use their rescued fire victims as shields during this debris shower. No, they don't. The debris was behind them, meaning they turned their bodies to shield the victims. What am I going to do about my dip husband face? Jeremy points out things on the screen, cliche. In a world where superpowers are real, physical injuries as a result of superpowers are not real. Yeah, you said that as if the very next scene wasn't this, you big liar. This message will self-destruct. Brad Bird steals the Mission Impossible from a franchise he will one day direct. You know, for a dude whose videos are essentially 35% pop culture references, you really seem to hate it when others use them. It's almost like it's sinful or something. Do residential homes have water sprinklers? As you can see, we do in California. Hell, the only reason other places don't is because it's usually not required and they cost a lot of money. Convenient jungle waterless slip and slide. If there is one thing a jungle is not, it's waterless. Since later we see this thing has propeller arms, why is it not using said propeller arms right now? Because right now, those propellers are being held in place by the super strong Mr. Incredible? This molten lava causes no damage whatsoever to the Omnidroid. Yeah, and? It's obviously made of a metal that has a higher melting point than rock. Big whoops. I take it our host is... Oh, I'm sorry. Mirage and Mr. Incredible are definitely not this close, and not close enough to have a normal conversation, for sure. And that is a waterfall of lava. How can they even remotely hear each other at all? I'ma let you finish, but a waterfall of lava? A waterfall of lava? Waterfall? Why is he training? He got that one gig and got paid, but Mirage gave no indication he'd have more work in the future. I mean, sure, maybe he's just trying to feel better about his body, and that's cool, but with workouts and the new cars, movie suggests Bob somehow knows he'll have more superhero work coming. Success is where preparation meets opportunity. Real ones know what I'm saying. Stray hair on a jacket always means your man is cheating cliche. Yeah, but it's clearly a woman's hair with a different color than hers. I'm not saying that she should expect that her husband is cheating, but he's clearly doing something that he's not being honest about. Hello? We have a new assignment for you. First time, they sent a self-destructing iPad. Second mission, regular ass phone call direct to this family's home phone line. Because f security, right? I mean, this is ultimately what gets Helen curious enough to go after Bob later. So Syndrome's outfit sloppy mission delivery really caused his own demise, if you think about it. So what is this now? Explaining plot points? The villain causing their own downfall is a staple in the superhero genre. Why do you think that correctly identifying this is a sin of this movie? You sly dog! You got me monologuing! I well, he didn't get you to do anything, asshole. And just because you're self-aware about the monologuing doesn't make it right, does it? But aren't you missing the entire point of the scene? Syndrome himself is stating the monologuing isn't right, so where are you getting it being right from? This is simply the payoff to the earlier scene where Frozone and Bob were at a stakeout. And yeah, Mr. Incredible did get him to monologue. His apology is what caused Syndrome to explain what caused his heel turn. Light rating negative. Mr. Incredible terminated. This is the worst goddamn life-sensing probe ever created. It doesn't have any proof of Mr. Incredible being dead, unless it got fooled by the convenient gazer beam skeleton down in the cavern. That's exactly what happened. And can also withstand the temperature of over 1,000 degrees. Yes, but can the baby's face? Another one of those moments where the ding sound just plays in the middle of the voiceover. And then, the very next sin, the sin count just disappears completely. It's pretty ridiculous that all these superheroes died and there wasn't one word about it through their network. 
Sure, they may have gotten out of touch over the years, but all these people dying and not even a whisper about it? You answered yourself. They are all out of touch with each other. Because the supers can't be out in the open, the fact that they died fighting a supervillain won't be on the news. However, there are whispers about the missing superheroes. Whispers, meaning their alter egos are being reported missing. That's what the newspaper you were talking about earlier was saying. Incredible fire-based garbage disposal here. But what if you accidentally bump dinner into this thing? Shouldn't the fire at least be button activated? Everything wrong with The Incredibles, ladies and gentlemen. This bullshit. Take that off before somebody sees you. Wait, who's going to see it? You're in a bedroom where you just closed all the blinds. It's almost like there's a big ass window through the door here. The kids stowed away, which is cute, until you think about how they did it. I mean, only one of them can turn things invisible, and yet they somehow arranged a sitter in seconds, snuck into the car before mom for a ride to the airport, snuck onto the plane, and then stayed quiet this whole time. Now you're just making things up. They didn't arrange a sitter in seconds. They clearly waited until Helen left to do that, and Violet stated that after she left, Dash ran off. You know, the character whose power is super speed? He probably got there before Helen did, so Violet simply followed Dash, who she knew was heading to the airport, and considering how long planes take to get clearance for takeoff, well, let's just say you actually didn't think about it. It would certainly suck if these missiles hit the jet, but considering what Edna said about their supersuits being indestructible, would it really be all that bad? They'd probably survive that, which we would then send. Actually, only Helen's and Jack-Jack's suits were demonstrated to be indestructible in that scene, meaning Helen has a legitimate fear for her children's lives. And did you just admit to being given information that you would then ignore for a bullshit sin? Did I hear that right? Look, I don't care how awesome these little jungle speeder things are. They aren't catching up to the Dash we've seen in this movie. Yes. Which is why Dash clearly outruns them. Dash is a Doogie Howser graduate of the Prometheus School of Running Away From Things. Considering these vehicles are being piloted by people, it wouldn't matter which direction he ran because they're being piloted by people. <laughs> CinemaSins removes us in here, as they should, so I will too. You married Elastigirl? <laughs> How do you not know that after following Bob around all this time? Okay, so maybe you don't recognize her because she doesn't have her mask on, but you got Mirage to do some hardcore stalking, and she knew what Bob looked like without his mask on, so I don't get your surprise at all. The movie showed that Syndrome learned the location of Frozone, and because Bob and Frozone hang out to do superhero stuff on occasion, that's how they learned of Mr. Incredible's location. Drums remote! Come on, man, what are you, a rookie? I don't understand this complaint. Bob wasn't there when the robot attacked Syndrome, so how would he know this is what triggered it? Why are there no labels on this remote that explains what each one does? Man, that's some elementary stuff right there, but Syndrome decided, nah, I can memorize it. Well, yeah, he created the remote. Why would he need to label something he created? Syndrome is a genius, not an oblivious moron. The only thing hard enough to penetrate it is... Yeah, but I thought Syndrome built an upgrade to the robot you destroyed, and wouldn't that be part of the upgrade? You mean this is actually going to work? Try thinking about it for just a moment, Jeremy. If Syndrome made the machine out of more durable metal, that would necessarily mean its claws became more durable as well, hence this working. Besides, the upgrade was to make the Omnidroid smarter so it wouldn't attack itself, not being unable to penetrate itself, like the lawyer in Wishmaster 2. You rank amateurs. Everyone knows the best Pixar film is The Incredibles. Have you seen Elastigirl's ass? Ass, titties, ass and titties, ass, ass, titties, titties, ass and titties. 